Hi, this is Scott Walker. Scott, David Koch, how are hey, you? Hey, David, I'm good, and yourself? I'm very well. I'm a little disheartened by the situation there, but uh, what's the latest? Uh, we're actually hanging pretty tough. I mean, you know, this, uh, amazingly, there's a much smaller group of protesters, almost all of whom are in from other states today. Um, the state assembly is taking the bill up, getting it all the way to the, the, the last point it can be at where it's unamendable, uh, but but they're waiting to pass it to the Senate. Team. But they're the Senate Demo or excuse me, the Assembly Democrats uh, have about 100 amendments they're going through. The state Senate still has the 14 members missing, but what they're doing today is bringing up all sorts of other non-fiscal items, many of which are things that the members in the Democratic side care about. And each day we're going to ratchet it up a little bit. The Senate Majority Leader had a great plan. He, he told them about this morning. Uh, he told the Senate Democrats about, and he's going to announce it later today. And that is the Senate Organization Committee is going to meet um, and pass a rule that says if you don't show up uh, for two consecutive days on a session day in the state Senate, the, um, the uh, Senate Chief Clerk, it's a little procedural thing here, but can actually have your payroll stop from being automatically deducted into Beautiful. your checking account. And instead, you still get a check, but the check has to be personally picked up, and he's instructing them, uh, which we just loved, to lock them in their desk on the floor of the state senate. Now, you're not talking to any of these Democrat bastards, are you? Uh, I, there's one guy that's actually voted with me on a bunch of things I called on Saturday for about 45 minutes, uh, mainly to tell him, that while I appreciate his friendship and he worked with us on other things, told him why I wasn't going to budge. Mainly because I thought right. he's, he's about the only reasonable one over there. And I figured if I talked to him, he'd go back to the rest of the gang and say, you know, I've known Walker for 20 years. He's not budging. Now, what's his name again? Uh, his name is Tim Cullen. All right. He, I'll have he, to give that man a call. Well, actually, in, in his case, I wouldn't call him, and I'll tell you why. He's pretty reasonable, but he's not a, he's not one of us. Um, uh, so I, I, I would let him be. I think he is in a position where he can maybe motivate that caucus, but he's not a, he's not an ally. He's just a, he's just a guy. Who, he was in the Senate years ago. He was actually the Senate Democrat leader um, back in the 80s, and Tommy Thompson hired him to be the head of Health and Human Services. He went into the private sector, made real money, and uh, uh, became a little more open-minded. And uh, last huh. fall, he got elected to the Senate seat he was in 25 years ago. And he's kind of one of these guys who he really doesn't care. He's not there for political reasons. He's just trying to get something done. So he's good to reach out to for me, but he's not a, he's not a conservative. He's just a pragmatist. Now, who, who can we get to budge on this uh, collective bargaining? Well, I think in the end, a uh, couple of things are one, if the um, if the, um, the I think the paycheck will have an impact. Uh, secondly, one of the things we're looking at next, we'll probably announce in the next day or two. We've been working with our Republican leaders in the legislature. Is uh, we may we're still waiting on an opinion to see if if the unions have been paying to put these guys up out of state. Uh, we think there's at a minimum an ethics code violation, if not an outright felony. Well, they, they're um, probably putting hobos in suits. Yeah. That's what we do sometimes. Well, the, the I mean paying for the senators to be put up. Uh, oh. I know they're paying for these guys to be in. No, you can, I mean, people can pay protesters to come in. I mean, that's not an ethics code. But, I mean, literally, if the unions are paying the 14 senators, if they're paying for their food, they're lodging anything like that. Uh, we believe at a minimum it's an ethics code violation, and it may very well be a felony misconduct in office because, see, technically, it, it's not just a political contribution. It is if they're being paid to keep them from doing their job. We think that's an, uh, um, I mean, there's legally an obstruction, not of justice, but a, an obstruction of their ability to do their job. And uh, we still got the attorney general's office is looking into it for us. So we're trying about four or five different angles. So each day we crank up a little bit more pressure. But the other thing is I've got layoff notices ready. Uh, we put out the at-risk notices. We'll announce Thursday 
uh, they'll go out early next week, and we'll probably get five to 6,000 state workers will get at-risk notices for layoffs. We might ratchet that up a little bit, too. Beautiful, beautiful. We've got to crush that union. Well, it's one of those where, in the end, you know, the, the, the uh, and I've had not only Colin, I talked to myself, I had three or four of my other uh, business leader friends who know him over the years and, and just kind of pass the message on to these guys. If if they think I'm caving, they've been asleep for the last eight years because I've taken on every major battle in Milwaukee County and won even in a county where I'm overwhelmingly overpowered politically and because we don't budge. If you're doing God the right, right thing, you stay, you stay firm. And in this case, you know, we say we'll, we'll wait it out. If they want to start sacrificing thousands of public workers will be laid off, Sooner or later, there's going to be pressure on these senators to come back. But we're not Beautiful. compromising. We're not going to. The, the other thing we may do, because the senator I mentioned thinks that these guys, you got a few of the radical ones, who unfortunately one of them is the major, a minority leader, but most of the rest of them are just looking for a way to get out of this. You know, they're scared out of their mind. They don't know what it means. There's a bunch of recalls up against them. They'd really like to just get up back here and get it over with. And uh, so the the paycheck thing, some of the other things threaten them, threatens them. Um, I think collectively there's there's enough going on. And as long as they don't think I'm going to cave, which again we have no interest in. An interesting idea that was brought up to me this morning by my chief of staff, if we won't do it till tomorrow, is putting out an appeal to the uh, the Democrat leader that. I would be willing to sit down and talk to him, the Assembly Democrat leader, plus the other two Republican leaders, talk, not negotiate, and listen to what they have to say if they will in turn, uh, but I'll only do it if all 14 of them come back and sit down in the state assembly. They can, uh, they can recess it to come back over and talk to me, but they'll have to go back there. The reason for that is we're verifying it this afternoon, but legally we believe once they've gone into session, they don't physically have to be there. If they're actually in session for that day and they take a recess, the, the, uh, the 19 Senate Republicans could then go into action and they'd have a quorum because they started out that way. Um, so we're double checking that, but that would be the only, if you heard that I was going to talk to them, that would be the only reason why is we would only do it if they came back to the Capitol with all 14 of them. And my sense is, hell, I'll, I'll talk. If they want to yell at me for an hour, you know, I, I'm used to that. I, I can deal with that, but I'm not negotiating. Bring a, bring a baseball bat. That's what I do. <laughs> I have one in my office. You'll be happy with that. <laughs> i got a slugger <laughs> with my name on it. Beautiful. But in the end, this is and, – and, and, it, it, and I even pointed out last night because I'm trying to keep out the, as many of the private unions as possible – Said this is about the budget. This is about public sector unions. Hell, even FDR got it. Um, th th there's no place uh, for the kind of. Uh, I mean, you essentially are having taxpayers' money be used to pay to lobby for spending more of taxpayers' money. It's absolutely ridiculous. Beautiful. So it's uh, this is ground zero. There's no doubt about it. But uh, I, I think you know for us. I just keep telling my – I call any I, – I tell the Speaker and the Senate Majority Leader every night, give me a list of people I need to call at home, shore them up. Um, the New York Times, of all things, I don't normally tell people to read the New York Times, but the front page of the New York Times has got a great story. It's one of these unbelievable moments of true journalism, what is supposed to be objective journalism. They got out of the Capitol and went down uh, one county south from the Capitol to Janesville, the Rock County. That's where the General Motors plant once was. Right, right. They, they moved out two years ago. The lead on this story is about a guy who was laid off two years ago. Uh, he's been laid off twice by a GM who points out that uh, everybody else in his town has had to sacrifice except for all these public employees. And it's about damn time they do it. He supports me. Um, and, and they had a bartender. They had, I mean, every stereotypical blue-collar worker uh, type they interviewed, and the only ones that, that weren't with us were people who were either a public employee or married to a public employee. It's an unbelievable story. So I went through and called.